Good evening, folks. Trailer Tim here. Tonight, I'm going to do a review on this Renogy Smart Lithium Iron Phosphate Battery. It is a 100 amp hour, 12.8 nominal voltage. You can see on the label here. And so far, I'm pretty impressed with it. I've had it a couple weeks. When you get it, it comes in shelf mode, or it should. Basically, there's nothing across these terminals. It's turned off. We've got the two communication ports here. The left one allows you to plug in this dongle that it came with. You can see a dim glow of blue. You hold this down for a few seconds. goes bright. Now you've got your full voltage across the battery terminals. Hold it down again, turn it off. The other port here is to connect a Cat5 cable to another battery, which allows, if you have their battery monitored, it will actually show the capacity of both batteries. And apparently it has some kind of a balancing function between the two if they're connected in parallel, which you can only connect these batteries in parallel. It comes with a couple bolts. These are eight mil or five sixteenths uh, bolts and it comes with the two longs and two shorts depending how thick your leads are that you're putting on there and the thing's quite light i don't know it's 26 28 pounds something like that super light just grab it toss it over your shoulder and go okay i've got the battery installed it's just the one battery it goes through a 175 amp anderson pole style quick connector that's all two gauge wire. A little bit overkill for this, but hey, go big or go home. There's a 500 amp shunt that goes to my uh, amp capacity meter. And I've got it going through a breaker too. I also have a 1500 watt. This is not a pure sign, just a modified sign, wave inverter. And I have tied it in through its output into my air conditioning breaker on the panel, seeing as how I do not have air conditioning. And by flicking that breaker on, I can power up the entire RV. Okay, here we are back at the monitor screens. Rather than the dongle that came with the battery, I have the Renogy battery monitor instead. It performs the same function. You hold this button down. There we go, we've powered up the whole unit. What we've got now on my LE battery meter is a draw of 2.6 amps. So right now I've got the inverter on. I've got a couple lights on. And I set the capacity at 100 amp hours on here. I will do another video explaining this meter. So I set it at 100 amp hours. We've used up nine and a half amp hours so far, leaving us 91.6%. And our voltage is at 13.2. Now I'm gonna put on some loads and show you how well this battery does. So I'm gonna start by turning on my furnace. And we can monitor the voltage while that is on. So it hasn't kicked on yet, it should kick on here in a sec. There we go. So we're now up to 8.1 amps. We still got 13.1 volts. Now I'm gonna turn on my electric heater. I'll let you take a look at that. And we now have a draw of 74, almost 75 amps. And our voltage is at 12.2. I must note too that it's actually right at uh, freezing right now. It's right at zero degrees Celsius. That battery is frozen. 
It's been cold here for a couple days. Even on beautiful Vancouver Island, we do get cold weather. I'm gonna turn off the heater now and try the microwave. So our amperage back down to 7.8 draw. Okay, let's turn on the microwave now. Got some water in there. So what have we got now? 80 amps. We still got 12.1 volts. You'd never get that off a lead acid battery, not with one. 12.1 volts at 80 amps. Now you can watch our amp power capacity going down. Oh, microwave shut off. So now this will bounce back. I'll turn off the furnace. And we'll get our amperage to head back down to a couple. So it'll get back up to 13.1 or 13.2 once it settles down. Okay, so it's been three, four minutes. The voltage has come back up to 13.26 uh, volts, almost to the 13.3 when we started. Um, I got the amp, the load on this battery down to 0.5. So now that is the voltage at the shunt. The voltage internally on the battery is actually the same voltage, so there we go. Under the high load, you can notice a slight difference between the two. Some of the losses in the cabling going from the shunt to the battery and then from the battery terminals into the battery itself. Another interesting fact here, with, in this case, a 6.2 amp draw, my meter here, the capacity meter that the energy meter shows at this load, 6.1 amps, we have 14.1 hours of battery life left. And that is with 13% uh, of it used already. That monitor is kind of nice for letting you know that, but it shows you the real capacity of this battery. Now with a 74 amp load, and a 100 amp hour battery that is at 70 or 87 percent capacity it's still saying 1.1 hours so if you do the math it does work out close to 100 amp hours so pretty impressive i don't think i would normally be drawing 80 amps for any period of time while 80 amps is only going to last an hour off this battery anyways so I should have two batteries in here for this if I want to run a microwave. But for running a furnace and, and lights, this thing has an incredible amount of capacity for one small lightweight battery that I can keep inside. That's the other benefit of this battery. It doesn't gas, so I can leave it inside the motorhome or inside any of your RVs. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with it so far. And one more thing I'll show you is if you decide that you want to put your trailer to bed for the night or the week or the month, you would hit that switch that came with the battery, or in my case, this one. There, we shut everything down. Battery's totally disconnected. Didn't even have to access the battery whatsoever. So if you found this informative or entertaining, please, please like it. Please subscribe. I've got more videos coming on some other gadgets that I purchased that I have installed in my truck camper. Thanks for watching. Cheers.